Hi everyone, this is Shelley Old from UNAVCO, and for this Out to Lunch, we'll be exploring the uh, ground motions of the United States and the world using the UNAVCO Velocity Viewer. Now here's an image from the Velocity Viewer that uses data from the UNAVCO Plate Boundary Observatory that's part of the EarthScope project. And then here's what you would see when you first come to the page. Uh, I'm going to show the tool through a series of uh, screenshots. Um, the product is in beta, which means that under certain cir circumstances and web browsers, you might come to this page and only see the map. But if you give it a nudge, then the vectors will show up. So all of a sudden you see all these blue arrows. Well, what are these blue arrows? Well, they're more than just random arrows. Um, every place where you see one of these is a high precision GPS that is installed into the ground. The length of that arrow indicates how quickly the ground is moving at that spot point. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see a magenta arrow. Um, I will start calling it a vector. And that vector in magenta represents 25 millimeters per year. The vectors are pointing in the direction that the ground is moving. There are two pieces of information here that are useful um, to, to note right away is that you can choose the different kind of data sources, and I'll show you the drop down in the next screen, and how many markers or GPS stations are displayed. When, we, when you first open up the map, it automatically chooses to show one in 10. So you're only seeing one tenth of the full network of data that's available for this for the UNAVCO data set. Here's a list of all of the different data sets that are available currently. There are two from UNAVCO and they're in two different reference frames. I'll show you an example of what I mean by reference frame in a few minutes. And then there are a number of data sets that are world focused and the last word indicates, again, which reference frame. So for example, Africa, Africa would stay stable and the rest of the world's plates would rotate or move compared to Africa. In the bottom set are the model data, again, with uh, four different reference frames. And as I mentioned before, you can change how much data you show on the map. Right now we're doing one in 10, but we're going to change that as we zoom in. So I changed it to show one in five. And another piece of the tool is the vector length. So as you change the scale, the vectors do change length. However, some places of the earth are moving more quickly than others. So for this one, I changed the vector length to one half of its normal scale still down in the bottom left-hand corner, you can always check. So you can see the vectors that are, they look like they're in the ocean, but there's actually a little tiny island there where this GPS is installed. And you can see it's almost twice the length of the magenta. So it's approximately moving about 50 millimeters per year. And we're also going to show the plate boundaries on the next image. Boom, we have a new image, it has the plate boundaries. And you can see that um, actually in California that it's not just a transform fault, that there are three different kind of boundary types that are illustrated. I bet that's not something you see every day in your textbooks. And if you wanted to figure out, well, which kind of boundary type is it? Down below at the bottom of the map, you can see all the different data tool symbols. And about three quarters of the way down, you can see the different kinds of boundary types. Um, these come from the USGS. It's kind of hard to tell on the screen, um, but the color that's uh, up in California is the Continental Transform Fault. Although it is rather close together in color to the convergent and spreading rift. Um, so you'll have to play with the tool to actually see that probably in better detail. And 
because I'm a geologist at heart, uh, taking a quick look at the different kinds of vectors that are there, what are some of the things that you notice? Well, you might have said, wow, they're different lengths. And you're right. And off on the Pacific side of the uh, plate boundary, they're much longer than the uh, vectors that are to the northeast on the east side or on the North American part of the plate boundary. You also might notice that basically North America at this zone in that gray circled area and other areas is being deformed. It's being pulled along by the uh, Pacific plate. Pretty cool stuff. Now, zooming in a little bit more, now we're going to uh, take a look at the station labels and show you how you can download data. I've also changed how many markers to show one and three. If I showed all of them, which I could probably at the zoom level, uh, you would see that in California, the network of GPS that's there is very dense. And that's because we have this huge plate boundary along the San Andreas Fault. So now I've shown the uh, station labels, every single place where you see one of those green label markers is a GPS station, and you can get data when you click on those green markers. So this is P471. Um, it's down in the southwest part of California, and the first thing that you might notice is that it has a name and then a long name, and if you click on that blue part, it'll take you to the PBO station page. A nice feature of the PBO station page is over on the right-hand side, you can see all the stations that are close by, and each one of these is clickable, so you could quickly go to another station. Going down what's inside the station information page, the latitude and longitude rounded off to only two decimal places. Since this is high-precision GPS, it's actually measuring down to the millimeter level, and there would be five decimal places. However, most people's handheld GPS only is uh, accurate to 3 to 30 meters. The next components that are shown are the horizontal speed and the direction. That's why the, each of those arrows is actually a vector, because it has speed and direction together. Then here are the individual speed components for east, north, and up. In some places, you might have negative numbers, which means that you would be going in an opposite direction. For example, east, negative 25.09, means that it's actually moving west. <laughs> and <laughs> I have a lot more to the tools that I could show. Um, you can download this data and put it right into Excel. And you can take this plot and make it larger and print it out. So moving on to Cascadia, and I think I'll probably end at that point, uh, one of the things I wanted to show is that we still have the station labels available. And um, here I'm showing, oh, these are the different uh, data sources that I want to show you guys. So up in the right-hand corner, we're going to change the data source. I moved it from a North America reference frame to a no net rotation reference frame, meaning we could be sitting on the moon and watching the world plates move around. And you can see the vectors change length and direction when you change the reference frame. Now you could do the same thing with the GEM GSRM data sets, and that um, gives you a lot more data. However, when you show the station labels, you don't get the additional information of being able to download the data or seeing a plot. But I did want to show you some of these different kinds of data types um, so that you could see how that changes what you're seeing. An important one is uh, looking at the modeled velocity and that is useful if you're trying to teach about plate tectonics and you're looking at convergent areas and you might say, well, where's the plate boundary in this situation or what kind is it? And so here now I'm showing the plate boundaries. And so in summary, there's a lot of different data types that you can show. 
There's different colors you can change the vectors to. Here I'm showing error ellipses, meaning how much error is built in. Um, you can change the color from like blue to another color because if you put on the satellite view, all of a sudden you've got blue on dark green, it's kind of hard to see. Now you've got it in yellow. We looked at the vector length. We looked at station labels, the error ellipses. I didn't show the vertical rates. I'll let you guys play with that. And then um, some other data that you can show are the volcanoes, where they are and their labels, their names, and then showing earthquakes and faults. So as you can see, there's a lot of different kind of data that you can show in support of exploring plate tectonics and seeing how the Earth is moving in different areas. Thank you very much.